actually heard her talking about nonprofits and the great help that they provide to people who are at great need, individuals, uh, you know, and families, unemployment, uh, injuries, fires, you know, the bad things that happen, disasters, where you need some help. Let's talk about fundraising and your participation as a funder of these organizations. You're often asked to donate to organizations, so, and you wonder where does the money go? You know, and every now and then it comes up in the news. Mm -hmm. uh, some organizations spend uh, a greater percentage of donations on administration than in delivering services than others. What's your situation with, with regard to that at all, Well, our situation is um, very good in that context. We spend total for training, administration, fundraising, everything, about 12%. Um, in terms of running the organization versus programming. My argument, though, for uh, a donation would center on how effective are you in using the money? What are the outcomes? What are you able to achieve with the money as opposed to somebody could put 100% of their money into programming. If it doesn't help people, has the money yeah. been well spent? So how do you measure that kind of stuff? Well, we have indicators uh, in every program area. We have key outcomes that our teams work on. We've been recognized nationally and regionally as one of the leaders in benchmarking and creating metrics and then using those metrics to constantly move your quality forward as a population you serve changes. So it's a challenging task, but when you put your mind to it, it can happen. Every meeting, our board gets a scorecard on the effectiveness of every program that we operate. Okay. And at the Salvation Army, uh, how, how do you do it? Are you concerned that uh, uh, sufficient funds are going into the programs as opposed to administration? Yeah, that's a, one of the great things about the, the Salvation Army. The machine of the Salvation Army, the organization has been around 150 years. Uh, it's because of the low overhead. It, you know, and it, it ranges anywhere from uh, 80 cents to 86 cents, and that dollar goes direct to direct service. And so um, that is, has been a lifesaver for us to continue and to continue the work that we do. Yeah. Now, now, do you take donations of money? I'm sure you do, but I mean, most of the time you're asking for food, though, right? Well, we, are, we ask for food. That's an important part of what we do. But we also ask for donations because at the food bank, having the funding to be able to purchase food, we, we're able to get a bigger bang for our buck mm -hmm. than you going to a local retailer and purchasing retail prices. So we're buying wholesale, so we're able to stretch the dollars a little better. Yeah. But what, what percentage of the food comes from your purchasing wholesale or, or however you get it versus people going to the ball game or whatever and taking the canned goods and you know, you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, about a third of the food that we distribute now we're having to purchase. We're having, actually having to, to um, uh, take money and buy mm -hmm. as opposed to being able to depend on food drives and other s traditional sources. But you buy in bulk, you get a good deal for your We do, yeah. yeah. We buy tractor trailer loads of food. Yeah. But two-thirds comes from uh, private donations, just people... About two-thirds, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I never would have guessed And that. government funding, you know, there's some... There's the federal program offers a couple of uh, federal food programs that we're able to rely on. Mm -hmm. And so um, between that and local donations, food drives, et cetera, et cetera, we're able to... Um, to do pretty well in that in that regard. Yeah. What about dealing with the government? Uh, you have to deal with the government. Everybody gets some government money, and every time a budget comes out, federal, state, uh, or even local, you hear cries of oh, "You're cutting, uh, you're it's cutting us dangerously." How do you deal with the government in that regard? Well, we advocate. We try and educate people, particularly elected officials, about where the money goes how effectively it's used. I think a lot of people think that money that goes in the uh, social service specter, sector doesn't draw results, but actually it does. I think we all haven't done a good job of talking about how we've been able to deliver outcomes and return on investment. Well, let me stop you there for a second and ask all three of you. Uh, it, it, obviously, your organizations do well in that regard. I, I honestly believe that. But uh, aren't there some organizations out there that might give you a bad name that are, are not doing uh, the right thing, uh, you know, mishandling money, uh, you know, things like that? Because you hear the politicians anyway, and, and even people on the street saying, uh, you know, all this money going to social welfare, it's just going down the drain. People are cheating. Uh, people are stealing from the taxpayers. You hear that. Uh, so what about other organizations? And without naming names, uh, is it um, 
is, is, are, are people generally on the up and up or are there problems out there in the nonprofit community? I think people are on the up and up. I think if you look at the nonprofit community, we probably have few, less misuse of money than the for-profit sector does. Usually when that happens, it's an organization that doesn't get audited, which seems like a, a very reasonable precaution to take to make sure money is well spent. I thought spent. you had to be audited. No, you don't. Oh, really? No, there are government entities that provide money to organizations that are not audited. Hmm. And frequently when they do audit, they find that maybe some money has been misplaced. The, the entities and the people have the most at risk of, about fraud occurring in the sector are the agencies themselves. If there's some type of scandal in an agency, it really impacts agency. that agency. In, in terms of a social service agency, because oh. it hurts your private donors, it hurts the government. And here's an interesting part of this, PJ. The government spends a ton of time, money, and staff looking at how you spend money and what you spend it on. You realize in the state of Pennsylvania, no one has ever asked us at the state level. I told you about how we collect all this outcome data. Nobody's ever asked us for it. If you want to know if your money's being well spent, you should say, what did I get for my money? Nobody at the state level asks you that question. Isn't that interesting? Is that your uh, experience? Yeah, it's, very, it's similar. I, I think um, because uh, we deal with the population that we deal with, there's always a risk for fraud. You know, there's always somebody who's trying to take advantage of the system. Mm -hmm. um, and the Army traditionally has, has not got into the political arena. We're not lobbyists. However, we do visit the Capitol. We, we know our congressmen. We know our representatives. We try to best explain what the Army's doing and our need. And uh, that, that's sort of where we, we have that check and balance there. And we, too, are audited internally as well as externally. So we have, we have those safeguards in place for the organization. But again, with the, the folks, um, the customers that we deal with, there's always there's always a percentage of, of fraud. That well, we, we, have, we, we have to take a break. I'm sorry, Ed, you, okay. you'll, have, you'll be first up when we come back. We're gonna, we're gonna take a break. Uh, we, we, when we continue, we wanna talk about the possibility of fraud in nonprofits. We'll be back in a moment, stand by.